Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. What made you think that cutting a brand new program that has no other opportunity to get support was a good idea? If your child has been diagnosed with autism, you need to know about some proposed changes that could impact your child's treatment in North Dakota. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Proposed changes will take services from the Autism Spectrum Disorders Medicaid waiver and place them underneath the Medicaid state plan. That's where the concern comes in for some. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker spoke with people who expand on those concerns. I want to do this so badly, but it has to be at a rate that we can pay for the staff who is doing the therapy and our administrative costs. Sandy Smith is worried that proposed changes to how autism services are covered under Medicaid in North Dakota will prevent behavioral analysts from creating programs for children who are autistic. If the reimbursement rate is so low that the provider can't provide that, in a sense then I have lost my program design and monitoring and my skills training from the waiver. If the money isn't there or isn't enough, the analysts won't be there, which Smith says will have a negative impact on families. I'm not intending to keep rates from any providers by any means or, or slide in an unreasonable rate. Um, it's just a matter of we have to make sure that we meet uh, all the criteria of CMS of the Medicaid and Medicare Services Office before we release them to the public. My hope is that people will get informed and educated about what the state does. They know that in North Dakota their voice means something and that they can call the governor's office, call their legislators and say, this is unacceptable. Dr. Barbara Stanton says even before the Medicaid ordeal stemming from the mandatory budget cuts, the state cut 22 percent of the total autism program budget, a loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars, according to Stanton. Also, autism services, once standalone, transitioned into state medical services. This seems to be an area where we're seeing greater need. We need expanded services, so it didn't make a lot of sense that this was an area that would be cut. Autism was just transitioned um, to, a, to medical services where the majority of the Medicaid waivers are housed, and so it just seems like a logical um, choice for the department to place autism services there. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. You can lend your voice to this topic. Just look for this story at valleynewslive.com where you'll find a link to give a comment on the proposed changes. We have breaking news for you now. We're following reports of a missing child in South Fargo. The call came in around 4 this afternoon. Right now the details are slim. We have a crew on the scene, so stick with Valley News Live and valleynewslive.com for updates on this story. In other news, there's a new trend in the drug community that's got people concerned. The saying, just narc me, is being used by drug users who are about to overdose, indicating someone else who is sober should give them a shot of Narcan. U.S. Attorney Chris Myers is speaking out on the dangers of the wingman mentality. Myers recently worked on a case where kids would use opiates and then have a designated wingman or someone who carries Narcan in case of an overdose situation. He says that method is extremely dangerous. It's just like asking a rattlesnake uh, to bite you uh, if there's an antidote available. Uh, and it's extremely risky behavior. And coming up on 630 Point of View, Chris Myers joins Chris Berg to continue the conversation on overdoses. We've got some great Wednesday weather to talk about. Light wind, sunshine, and warmer. Let's find out from Hutch whether tonight will be the same. Hutch? Well, things certainly are warming up, and it's been a beautiful day with light wind. And as we take a look at temperatures, we see 80 in Rapid City. And that warmth is working its way into the Red River Valley as we go through the next 24 hours. Cooler weather in north central Minnesota. Showers and thunderstorms developing on the Montana state line. And by morning, a few of us could see a few of these showers working their way through the central Dakotas and into the valley. Here's a look at that future radar as we go through the overnight hours. It'll be the wee hours of the morning, but a few of us could see thunder showers. Temperatures dropping off into the upper 40s by bedtime tonight. Crystal clear skies for the most part in Fargo Moorhead and it does look like Grand Forks will enjoy the same. I'll have details on how long this warm weather sticks around and we'll talk about a soggy and for some white weekend ahead. Details in a few moments. All right. Thank you, Hutch. 
A Fargo man is in jail after nearly hitting a school bus while driving drunk. The driver, identified as Kashki Sheikh Mohammed, had a blood alcohol level of 0.31 percent. The legal limit is 0.08 percent. He was arrested for DWI, not having a driver's license, and careless driving. He also had an active warrant for DWI out of Hennepin County, Minnesota. No children were on the bus at the time. Instead, the bus was full of law enforcement officers looking for distracted drivers as part of a distracted driving campaign. One man is in jail facing numerous charges after a wild police chase that wound up traveling down sidewalks and over a walk bridge in Grand Forks. 27-year-old Cody Lott of Grand Forks faces multiple criminal traffic charges. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson tracks the path of the wild pursuit of a suspect with a very long criminal history. Police started their pursuit on 17th Avenue South near Century School after the Sheriff's Department called off an earlier chase for a traffic violation. This person was uh, driving in an erratic manner, um, swerving towards uh, uh, oncoming vehicles and so forth. Things got wild when Cody Lout allegedly tore down Barron Boulevard north of Century School and left the road at Noble Cove and drove down this sidewalk into a park area along the English Cooley behind Altru Hospital where he drove over this walk bridge. And I looked right here and I saw headlights starting to go over the bridge. So that at that point I went down again to try to get Okay. My wife's phone, because mine was dead, All to right. call 911. And by the time I came back, I didn't see anybody. Police called off their chase when the suspect headed down the sidewalk and through backyards over that walk bridge. However, the suspect was quickly spotted here on 13th Avenue South near the hospital. And the chase was on again. It all came to an end here on the football practice field next to Purper Arena across the street from the Central Fire Station. The vehicle was now driving on its tire rims after hitting numerous curbs and other things. The suspect wound up driving into this grove of trees where he hit a tree which brought the wild chase to an end and Cody Lout was arrested. Lout was convicted in another incident of fleeing a police officer and reckless endangerment just last year. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Cody Lout's long criminal history includes numerous misdemeanor traffic charges and felony charges of abuse or neglect of a child and conspiracy to commit theft of property. A Fargo man is in court for allegedly biting a woman while trying to rip her clothes off and rape her. Holden Indvik is charged with three felonies for gross sexual imposition, aggravated assault, and preventing arrest. He pleaded not guilty to all the charges. A Fargo man was found guilty in municipal court for driving his semi-tractor to his home and parking it in his driveway. The North Fargo man was cited for breaking the city ordinance that states his truck weighs more than what is allowed on city streets not designated as a truck route. The judge found John Wagner guilty and he must pay a $100 fine. Wagner says he and his lawyer may appeal the decision. Just a few weeks ago, we told you about how Wagner's lawyer was arguing that any pickup truck driving on residential roads also violates this ordinance. The attorney, William Kirshner, had some titles that listed pickup trucks like a Ford F-150 over the five-ton weight. The ordinance states no truck or commercial vehicle exceeding five tons register gross weight shall be operated in the city of Fargo except upon truck routes. In today's schemes and ripoffs, the Better Business Bureau is warning about the return of a classic scheme sometimes known as the white van speaker scam. It usually involves someone approaching potential victims in public spaces trying to sell premium home entertainment products, usually electronics, still in the box at a deep discount. However, it's misleading. Customers think they're getting a deal, but discover the products in the boxes are worth far less than what they paid. The BBB recently got a report from southern Minnesota of someone who fell for it. The number of deer tags available was one of the lowest North Dakota has seen in years. But for those who did get a tag, it was a successful season. We're getting a look at some of the numbers, which could mean good news for hopeful hunters this year. We saw our success rate increase from last year, which means that our hunters had a, maybe an easier time filling those tags. We're just kind of ironing out the details of the 2016 season, but 
across the board may see a increase in the number of deer tags that'll be available. Here's a look at some of the statistics with the overall success rate at 68%. As you can see, muzzle loader success was 47%, archery with 35%, and youth had 